So for chapter eight, this is advanced counting. And what we're gonna particularly look like look at in say 8.1 and 2 here are applications of recurrence relations. So we're gonna revisit recurrence relations. Again, when we're talking about recurrence relations, we're talking about this. When we look at induction, where we have the, the basis step and then our inductive step. The inductive step, uh, where we get a formula out of this that spits out the inductive step, we could call this the uh, inductive relation or This inductive formula, or we could just simply call it a recurrence relation. Which is the terminology we're going to be using here. So again, say example for the Fibonacci numbers, f of 0 is 0, f of 1 is 1, this is our basis. But on the other hand, if I say to get to a new Fibonacci number, we take the Fibonacci number before it, add it to the Fibonacci number before that, and this guy here is our recurrence relation. So we're going to study these things, and one of the questions of why do we study re recurrence, re recurrence relations? Um, the reason why we study these is because Sometimes things are easier to think about or easier to model using a technique to make new objects from old. And uh, uh, let me see here. Let's think about, well, Fibonacci numbers is one way to do it. Um, let's do a couple of these things. Let's do one from the textbook, um, the Tower of Hanoi. The Tower problem, it would be, it was a, it's just a kid's puzzle, and I'm sure most people, I don't know, most, some people have seen this, where we have three posts. And I have disks sitting on these posts of different sizes. And the rule is I want to move all these disks from one post onto another post, but to do this, I'm only allowed to move one at a time, and I'm never allowed to take, say, I move a small one, and I'm never allowed to take a bigger disk. Oops. I'm never allowed to take a bigger disk and put it on top of a smaller disk. So this is bad. So I'm not allowed to do that. And so if I would look at this, we could say, all right, I could try to solve all my problems. You know, say, I can move this one here, I can now just move one, move him here, and then, well, I, don't, I can't move the big one anywhere, but I could move the small one, he can go there, and now I can move my big one, and so I move my big one, and now I'm going to move my small one, and let's say I move them all the way back here, and now I can move the medium size, and now I can move this one, and so that's how the tower fly works. And so we try to move these disks, oops, many there and I like to move one at a time now what we're gonna do is say you know let's build up this problem let's start off with say one disk and one disk is pretty easy I can sit there and say you know what I know how to solve that um, h1 takes one move so I just take it and I move it now, the thing that we could do about 
solving the Tower of Hanoi is we can solve it like a mathematician, which means if you know how to solve it, don't write, don't do it, just say what the answer is. For example, what's H2? H2 is literally there's a process here. What I would do is to solve H2, I would move H1 once, then move the one disk left over, and then move H1 again. And so what happened here was I would have two H1s, and then I would take H1, move the largest disk at the bottom, and then move H1 again. And so what happens is this is just simply 2H1 plus 1. All right, if I would have three disks, I'm going to say that if I knew H2, right, I know how to move H2. It's two H1s plus one. So I'm just gonna, now I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna go ahead and move H2. It's like, well, I'm not allowed to do that. Well, what I could say is, do you know how to move H1? Yeah, it's one, 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 right? An H1, then a one, then an H1. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna just simply move it and say, I did this. So I had my H2, what I did was I actually did this thing right here. And then, after that, I, I need one move to move my big guy, and then I move H2 again. And so that tells me that H3 is simply, I move the H2 stack, I move my biggest disk, I move the H2 stack. Wait a second, that's just the same problem. It's twice of the guy before plus one. And this happens that it's HN is going to be twice HN minus one plus one. So the reason why we study recurrence relations is because formulas that generate the sequences. So I can have my basis. So here's my basis. My sequence of moves, and here's my recurrence relation for my inductive step. This will generate my sequence of numbers. And so I could have the, the moves necessary start off at 1, and then it's twice this plus 1, which takes me to 3, twice this plus 1, which takes me to 7, twice this plus 1, which takes me to 15, twice this plus 1, which takes me to 31, etc. And so the number of moves that it takes is always a double plus 1, and so I get my sequence out of it. And it ended up being that I could try and solve it the hard way, but it was natural to talk about this problem as the larger values are multiples of the smaller, or we use smaller values to generate it out. Uh, another example. Uh, this particular example I like to call, I like to call, <laughs> is classically called, if you can't tell I'm still sick, is classically called a, uh, the uh, stranded sailors and monkey problem. Uh, the way it works is we had five sailors. We have sailor number one, sailor number two, sailor number three, sailor number four, and sailor number five. They get stranded on an island, and what they do is they collect all of the coconuts. And so I have all of my coconuts, and they make a big pile of the coconuts. And they go to sleep, and they're gonna they get there at night. They collect all of their coconuts in this pile and they all go to sleep and they're going to share them in the morning. Now, uh, the fifth guy wakes up and says, you know, I don't know if I trust everybody here, so I'm just going to be fair now. And what he does is he breaks the pile into five even pieces, but he notices that there's one left over. So he takes that one and he gives it to the monkey who's sitting there. And then he takes his and he hides it. So what happens is, and then he takes the four that are left over. So these two here are lost. And then for these four that are left over, he makes the big pile out of those four. And so if I look at this, I would say, you know what, what has happened? What's happened is the bigger amount is the smaller amount of what was the pile left over. If I would look at this, what is the bigger amount? Well, it's a smaller amount. If it was divided into four pieces, 
I would actually have had 5 because one of them was missing. So it is 5 fourths of that 1 pile plus 1. So um, what's happened, you know, what's happened for this is small amounts divided by 4 gets us that. And there's 5 of those. That's why we get the 5 fourths. And then what happens is the, the fifth sailor does this. And then the next, after he goes to bed, and then we're told that the fourth sailor does the exact same thing. He says that for his pile, he takes it and divides it into five, but there's one left over. He gives it to the monkey and then <clears throat> takes his fifth and then makes the pile smaller. takes that smaller pile and says, I'll tell everybody else. The third person does it. The second person does it. The first person does it until it gets all the way to the end. And they wake up the next morning and they're saying that, oh, look. What they notice is that there's an amount left over, and when they, they're not willing to, it's much smaller than it was at the beginning, but we're not told what the amount was, but we're told that when they try to share it evenly, that 5 divides A evenly, and there's nothing left over for the monkey, which is kind of interesting. That, and that's the entire puzzle, that what they then ask for is to solve this, is it's asking for is what's A5? Again, we could do a sequence here, and you could start off at A0 is equal to 5, but that would mean A1 is equal to 5 fourths of A plus 1, and then A2 is equal to, etc., until we got up to A5. The problem is they didn't tell you what A was. They just told you that 5 evenly divides it, and then you need to do some work, uh, a little bit of extra algebraic work to figure out the formula. Now, this is all a recap. The reason why we do recurrence relations is because many times as we're dealing with problems that we work with, the problem is best described as new objects are based upon some sort of combination of the old to make the new. And whether it be like moves for the Tower of Hanoi, bit strings that go together, shorter bit strings become larger bit strings, or sharing uh, particular uh, amounts of coconuts for monkeys.